Hi, Martin. I'm working on a design doc. Um, do you have a few minutes to help me with it? Yeah, I love design sessions. Great. Okay, we have these on-prem servers and our new developers keep building new things, which is great. But um, I'm thinking I need some kind of web application to help me manage it all. That and some batch processing to keep track of the state of things. Okay, this new application sounds like a good use case for serverless. Let's get started. High level, we want to make sure they go through the proper approval process before launching a new service. And frankly, it's getting difficult to keep track of everything. I want to build an application that helps me manage open ports on the servers keeps a log for our auditors, and allows developers to easily file requests for opening up access for new applications. We have three distinct users. Um, we have a developer, an admin, and an auditor. And the developer should be able to make requests for new open ports um, through a web application. And the admin should be able to approve those requests. Um, and the admin should also get notified if there are ever any open ports that um, he did not approve. And then the auditor should be able to see just the entire logs of all the things that have been open um, at any time. Oh, cool. Uh, sounds good. So we have them here. We started our system diagram. And down in the lower right hand corner, we put the servers that they're monitoring. This is a company internal app. Is that right? Yeah, it's completely internal. Oh, got it. So they are uh, employees. They should be able to reach it. But no other external users uh, should be able to reach this application. Exactly. What might we put in there to make it easy to keep employees in and everybody else out? Um, well, I think like another thing to consider is like, first of all, it's only internal employees, but also these two employees have different permissions and different roles of the things that they can do. So it should be something that allows us to kind of like, you know, tweak and tune the, the permissions levels. Mm. Oh, that's a good point. Developers and admins can do different things. Yeah. So I'm thinking then identity aware proxy here, uh, backed by App Engine. It's really easy to put IAP and App Engine together. Do you think that would work here? Yeah, no, I think that would work great. Um, OK, so then App Engine with a little IAP in front of it mm -hmm. controls like who can get in. OK, so but now we need to to we need to think about storage ah. because they are going to be making requests and approving requests. So that means that like we need to be able to create, read, update, delete some kind of something. Um, and to me, the big question is, do we use NoSQL or SQL? So we're trying to keep it serverless, um, uh, which would mean NoSQL. Uh, and I'm also thinking, uh, there won't be too many reports of, we won't do too many aggregations, like averages and sums and, and stuff like that, right? I think like just like thinking about like how the people are interacting with the data and also like how I would model the data. Um, NoSQL is really feeling like the right direction because they're, they're not gonna have to do like, you know, big reports. And even when you think about like, we have a server the server is, you know, represented by like the IP address, and then we have a set of ports underneath it. So if I were to have a document in a NoSQL database, the document, the ID would be the IP address, and then um, th we'd have the list of ports in it as rows, and then you know whether or not it should be open. Oh yeah, it's kind of hierarchical like that. Yeah, I, I agree. So yeah, let's go for NoSQL. Uh, Firestore is great and serverless, so it'll go very well together with the other serverless components here. Each document, I guess, would be a server, and, and as you said, underneath it has ports and permissions and things. Uh, yeah, for our, our auditor and also for just our peace of mind, um, we want to write a little port scanner so that we can we can check. We can check that all the ports that are open are the ones that have been approved. And I want this to happen nightly. And I don't like I don't want any interaction. Okay, so nobody goes in and clicks and says scan the ports right now. Okay, got it. Yeah. 
like a cron job, but oh. I don't <laughs> I don't want the cron job on my computer. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And Dina closes her laptop and goes on vacation and no cron jobs <laughs> are running. <laughs> Yeah, so, uh, right. And of course, the, the way to run cron jobs uh, in, in Google Cloud Platform is Cloud Scheduler. I think that would be a great choice here. We can set it to run nightly, change it to run hourly, whatever. Uh, and, then, and then this would, the, cl the Cloud Scheduler would need to call something. What kind of component should it call, I wonder? So like thinking of like the functionality that we want, mm -hmm. what we want to do is we want to have the the IP address, and we want to attempt to make a request to connect to every single port on the IP address. So, you know, <laughs> we're thinking of like nested for loops. Yeah. <laughs> which actually sounds really scary. Oh my gosh. Um, <laughs> but but the first thing that we need to do is we need to get the list of IP addresses. So maybe. Maybe we can like break up this functionality a little bit and have the like the first function just call to Firestore and and get that list of IP addresses. Oh, I really like that. Yeah. So okay. So that first function is really simple. Like you said, it just gets all the records uh, and does no port scanning on itself. Okay. So no nested for loop here. Uh, but that one is just pulling out the the data. Now, who does the actual work? That's a really great question because we we really want I don't want it to just like call another function because then we have the problem of the nested for loops yeah. and if you're you know going through the tens of thousands of maybe millions of of ports like something's gonna break and mm -hmm. it's gonna take a really long time and then what are you gonna do just like restart the whole thing so <laughs> yeah I, <laughs> right. I'd really like to do like some kind of like asynchronous, like fan out oh. kind of something. Oh, you said asynchronous. When you say asynchronous, Dina, that makes me think of PubSub. So would it work if the orchestration function published one like one PubSub message for every server and then we had those messages trigger a different cloud function that tested just one server each? That is so good. That's like even better than like like what I was originally thinking because because what that allows us to do then is like if um if our function fails for some reason, right? Then we only have to retry that one port on that one server and we don't have to worry about the hundreds of thousands or millions of other ports. <laughs> um it's just the one. Yeah, right. So it doesn't get stuck, no timeouts. Okay, this is really good. So the port tester then gets just one server that it should test, or maybe one server and one port combination. It tests that, so it's a really simple function. Uh, now it needs to put the data somewhere. Um, and I'm especially looking over there to the left at where it says admin. The admin should get an email whenever a port is open that shouldn't be open, right? How do we, how do we get that data over there into that email? Right. So I think then what we need is when we get to this port tester cloud function, like we're feeding in the IP address, mm -hmm. the port, and whether or not it should be open. And then we're receiving back the the response of like true, false, it was open. And so then we want all of the, these four pieces of data to, um, especially like if if it doesn't match, like if it's open and it shouldn't be open, or if it's not open and it should be open, because that can happen too. Mm -hmm then we want that to trigger an email. Whew. But also we want everything, not just the things that don't match, we want everything to go to the auditor. And so I think I think maybe we're gonna do like another pub sub thing. Oh, right, because, and I think the reason that this fits very well is when you said this data goes to two places, PubSub is amazing for that, right? You publish it once, and then you can have multiple subscribers. Yes, yes, multiple subscribers, and we can do we can do a filtered subscription. Oh. So then our little function doesn't have to do any logic. It doesn't have to like say like, hey, the, you know, if else, you know, this go here, go here. We're just sending everything to PubSub, and then we can have our filtered subscription that. Um, we'll pick up what whenever like the the match thing doesn't happen, you know, uh -huh. and that can trigger an email. Oh right, right, yep, yep. So we have that filter subscription could go into App Engine, 
App Engine has that little logic, little handler in there that whenever it gets one of these messages, it does what you just described. It calls an, an email API, sends an email. Cool. Ooh, I love it. So okay. we have that dangling thing down there. The auditor looks a little lonely in the lower left-hand corner. <laughs> How do we get data to uh, to them? Right. Um, okay. So let's uh, let's work backwards a little ah, bit. Uh, yes. Um, the auditor is going to want to look at like a report, mm -hmm. maybe you know, like in a dashboard. And when I think about you know dashboards, I start thinking about SQL. Like you, ah. you want to be able to like write queries. So we should be storing this data in 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 some in something that has like kind of like a SQL interface. And I'm thinking because we're just like appending rows, and it's it's going to be a lot of data. Mm. I'm thinking I'm thinking BigQuery might be a good option. I really like that. Yeah. Yeah, because this is exactly what BigQuery is for, right? Reporting. Uh, and yeah, so uh, we just put a little clamp function in there that is triggered. So I guess this one would not be a filtered subscription. It would be a regular old subscription, right? Yeah. Yeah, everything. We want everything. everything the auditor wants to see BigQuery. it all. Cool. All right. Very nice. So now we have auditor wants a web page. The data is in BigQuery already. This is great. Now, but we need that web page and BigQuery to meet here somewhere. Uh, I mean, should we sit down and write a web app and figure out some library that can draw graphs and oh, things? God. No, I don't want to do that. <laughs> <laughs> I've done it on so many projects. I really don't want to do it either. Yes. OK, um, I'm going to throw this out there. I think we should use Data Studio because like, when you're looking at BigQuery, there's already a button that's like, hey, look at this data in Data Studio. So there we go. Easy. <laughs> I, I like the way you think, because now a business analyst could draw the charts in Data Studio. A developer can focus on the other pieces of this. Um, and yeah, no more building yet another web app that draws charts. Somebody has already done it for us. <laughs> awesome. This looks so good. OK, um, let me just walk through it real quick, make yeah. sure I have it all. Um, I think I have enough for my design doc, but let's let's go through it. OK, so for our web app, we're going to have App Engine, and we're going to have Identity Aware Proxy IAP to control our permissions. And we're going to store all like the requests in Firestore. And then every night um, for our audit, we are going to have Cloud Scheduler basically kick off this like pipeline of pub sub and functions that ultimately is going to scan all of our ports and we're going to write all of the results to pub sub and we're going to have a filtered subscription that sends the bad results um, back to app engine and we're going to trigger an email to our admin and then we have all of results going into bigquery which we are going to show the reports in Data Studio. Yeah, I really like it. I think this flow would work well. Uh, this would actually, this would be a fun application to build. Yeah, I, 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 <laughs> I want to start building this cloud scheduler thing right now. It looks awesome. Yeah, yeah, my brain is tingling. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. I love these design sessions. Uh, thank you, everyone, for watching. This is how you might build a serverless-based uh, systems. Everything you saw here was serverless. If you have any questions for Dean or me about anything you saw in this video, or if you have requests for us for other types of application you'd like to see us do design sessions for, please add them in the comments below. Until next time, bye. <laughs>